I'm with Dennis Nash and we're about five miles outside of Pontypool, Pontypool. Yep. and you were working on uh, a building site yes. in the late 1960s Yes. and you unearthed something. So could you just tell us what year it was first, uh, Dennis? Uh, well, I do believe it was like 67, early 68. Right, okay. And the these are council houses that you were um, constructing, yeah? Yeah. And it's a place called, just tell me the name of the place. Uh, Seven View Grand Effort. So it's Seven View, named after the fact that it's the view of the River Seven. Yes. G Grand Differth. Garn. Oh, Garn, Garn Differth. Okay. Yeah, -R -R. So, so just tell us what happened. Tell, um, tell us what your role was on the building site first oh, and then tell us what happened. Okay, well, before it was a building site, it was an allotment. It was an open brown field. Mm -hmm. So uh, they passed the plans to build these uh, all these houses and flats up, uh, on the site. Mm -hmm. I started there as a general labourer. So we more or less built half the houses. And... Uh, I went in on the Monday morning and we were supposed to be digging the footings to put a block of flats in, in this particular place. Mm -hmm. So uh, we got down about two foot. And and we were, you, were you using machinery to dig the no, it? No, no, it was just shovels at first. Shovels, right. Right, yeah. it ended up with machines. Right. So we dug down about maybe 18 inches, two feet, and we had a sheet of lead mm -hmm. that none of us had none ever seen anything like this before, right? So we cleaned all the uh, all the earth off. That took us two days, and there was this massive sheet of lead, and it was probably in the region of twenty foot long by maybe twelve, fifteen feet wide. So how did you know it was lead? Well, it was lead. <laughs> right. You can so tell. It's obviously it. metal. You can tell. Oh, metal, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Grey and it's soft, pliable, and right. Uh, right. And what but, sort of thickness? Well, uh, we're talking about an inch, inch and a half thick. Right. Okay. Right, and uh, what struck me at the time was um, all along the one side of this uh, sheet of lead was all this strange, like hieroglyphic writing. Right. But us being Welsh boys, we just chopped it up and sold it for 40 quid at right. the scrapyard. It was just a little bonus for us. Right. And nobody questioned why it was there or, it, you know. Right, okay. So we dug this bit of lead up. The boss was off on holiday somewhere, and we got forty quid for the lead. But then we found a big rock, so we started trying to dig this rock out, and we went down maybe ten feet either side of this rock, and it was just getting wider and wider. Mm -hmm. And it sounds silly, but it it, it was like an underground mountain, mm -hmm. right? So after a week, now they brought the diggers in, started jack hammering. We was on it a week, jack hammering in this thing, and we got down over two foot below the original level of this mountain. And in the end, he had put the job back at a fortnight, and the boss went off to see the council about it. And um, what they decided to do then was uh, amend the plans, mm -hmm. right where the uh, covered this thing back over mm -hmm. and it was the toughest rock you ever come across with. I mean that JCBs and all them big banging armor right. things couldn't shift it. Right. it. Took him a week to get like a foot of it off. Right. And he was he was just getting beyond, you know. So it's been suggested that this was a cone <laughs> shape. Is mm. that what you yeah, yeah, did yeah, it have yeah. a, a round roundness to it or was it, was it like, flat sided or it was like the top of a pyramid basically. With sheer sides on it, but they were just getting wider, and it was getting wider and wider and wider. So flat sides, though. Yes. Yeah, flat sides. The top of a pyramid, and, but you, uh, but you didn't go down deep enough to find if it had a base or. Anything no, it like was that. just it was just going on and on and on. Like you so you've got the top of a pyramid, and on, on top of that, a lead slab, an inch and a half thick yeah. by twenty feet by 
12 feet or something. Yes, right. Approximately. With, yeah. with writing on it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, would you, could you remember what the writing was like? No. Could you compare well, it to anything that you know? Yeah, the Egyptianish. Egyptianish. That, that kind, I mean, I was an uneducated off at the time. Right. You know, I had a job to read and write right. English. Right? Okay. But it was just all funny uh, writing on there, right. like, basically, like, right. you know. Okay. I mean, and um, I understand that you're the only person alive that was, that was doing that work. Is it, do you know of any? Is there anyone else? Could we remember no, they were, they were boys from Walker Philly and Pontypridd, and uh, right. you know what I mean. So and you were only eighteen at the time. I was only eighteen. So, all right. So I, and, lived, and, I lived under a jazz away. So so how did you? When you sold it, how did you? How did you get it to the scrap merchant? To on the back of one of the wagons, just right. just chopped it up into manageable size, like and right, uh, and took it down to scrapyard. Like. Okay, and, and so how did you chop it up? With an axe. With an axe? Oh, right, okay. With an axe. Okay. Right. Just a hand axe, yeah? Ah, and that yeah, was enough yeah. to chop up the, the leg. So they right. all rubbing that out on us. I mean, this is like 46 years ago now or right. something like that. Okay. So a five pound in them days was a week's wages, basically. Right, right. So the buzz... They so the total buy, price that you got for it was? About 40 quid. Right. So Which is like, so sort of, what, eight weeks wages or something like something that? Something like that, right. Right. Okay. But uh, we were more concerned with the uh, chopping his lead up than any mystical uh, anything like that. We yeah, that, uh, I that, wasn't that. even aware of UFOs in them days, you know. Well, this isn't necessarily UFOs. It's in the ancient. It sounds like it's some kind of archaeology. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, so that the bosses then found out about this and had to change the plans of yeah. the estate, of the whole estate. So we tried. Like, we tried digging this rock out of the ground. We just thought it was a bell stone, you know. And there's a lot of bell stones in with it you know shaped like a bell you usually find them down the pit right now you, you said that you thought it had flat sides yes what was the texture of the stone like and what was the color of the oh, stone it was like? like flint it was it was solid it was brownie there was like a brownie gray right but it was so hard okay i mean they were smashing it with the, you know these big banging okay like on that. the back of a jc yeah and they it was banging it and just little chips was coming off you know what i mean <coughs> so adjacent to the actual whatever this thing was this rock was there just soil ar around it yeah it was an allotment it, an allotment it was so an ex allotment like. all right um i mean i've been going there since i was like two year old we used to have our own allotment over there so can you tell me how the decision was made to actually change the plans was there any of your bosses involved did you hear what the well it was all the council you know the right council was freaking out because uh, it had gone like a fortnight over schedule right and, and they was afraid of spending the money right so in the end they uh, they cobbled up this plant to cover it back over put a nice traffic island on it uh -huh. and the actual block of flats that was due there they moved like 50 feet uh -huh. to one side and built them built them up yeah because it when you <laughs> When you look at that traffic island, it is a bit odd. Have you seen the traffic island? Yeah, we've been there. Yeah, uh, but that's the exact spot. Right, right. And it's not it's not a round traffic island. It's sort of it's slightly triangular, yeah, like isn't a it? Tea drop, a teardrop, isn't it? Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, okay, so underneath that island, and you oh, <laughs> smack bang under there is that is underground mountain. Right, and so, and would you say it was a four sided pyramid? No, no. I'd, I'd say it was more three. A three, a three. It might be four, man. I, mean, I am digging back right. around 46 But you think it had ago. flat sides as opposed to a round cone? Yes. Yes. Right. yes. All right. And um, so how much of the thing was actually broken off and damaged? I mean, did, was there a flat piece on the top where you'd taken the... About the, two the, foot. About two foot. They got it below the minimal footings level. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. And that was it. They said, well, we give up. We were just digging and digging. He was down about 10 feet. Right. I tried to find the bottom with this thing so they could pull it and it was just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. What's your own feeling as to what it might have been? <coughs> at the time or now? Well, both. At the time, what did you think? And, at and the time, didn't care. Right. Okay. It was just, I was getting paid to do a job and uh, we got a nice little bonus out of it. I got 40 quid out of it. Right. And uh, just over my head. Mm -hmm. But looking back now, mm -hmm. with all the research I've done mm -hmm. over the years with Tony and everything, mm -hmm. Definitely something there. Right. Definitely something that's un out of the end. You know, they don't go moving blocks of flat and red feet and all that cost that that entails. Uh -huh. now, now, now the earth that you said was surrounding this this rock mm. um, seems to have been contained by some outer containing wall that was at the bottom, further down the yes, bank. Yes. Yes. So, so, and 
Anthony's very fertile soil, black right. soil. Like. So Anthony suggested that that wall was built for a reason to then fill in that area, which would have included this structure underneath. No, that makes sense. Right. Okay. Because it's uh, you know it's like countryside and uh, natural, mm -hmm. but the soil in the actual uh, allotments, yeah. rich black soil. So like I would have thought before my time, but I thought it would have been brought in. Right. And um, you have you told many people about this? No, not really. Told him. Anthony. Uh, and when did you tell Anthony? Anthony, I was told him. In the 19 1987. 1987. 20 years after it occurred. 1987. Yeah, yeah. we haven't been sat there talking one night talking about developing an interest in UFOs and uh, the mystical side of life. Mm -hmm. And I am to tell Tony. Mm -hmm. And that was it. It just. So, is there anyone still alive who's been told this story by you or by any, like the council or anyone else? Do you know? No, no. And, and what about the plans? Do you know if it would be possible to get hold of like the the original plans and then the modified plans? Just I would have thought so. I mean, the council don't throw anything away, do they? Right. So, so if we could get I the mean, fact that, that they modified the plan, that there would have to be a written record of that right. somewhere. Right. A modification request. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. That might be something worth uh, looking into, Anthony. Yeah, but, uh, I thought about this, I right. guess. Anthony's just saying that uh, he thinks that they may well have all of the plans there, which should su show two sets with, with, it, with the block well, of flats. It, 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 definitely, it definitely caused a bit of upset when they had to uh, uh, re-amend the plans. Like They had to get this building up, mm -hmm. you know, this huge block of flats. So all they did was move it 100 yards to one side. Yes. And what was left, they, they backfilled and uh, Put, put right. the roundabout and the little road in there. So it's directly under that little traffic island. Oh, aye, definitely. Yeah. So, so, so this this surrounding wall, which is an ancient wall, h how high was the earth ab above that wall in that area? Uh, well, on the allotment side, I would say about four or five feet. Mm -hmm. And the other side, which is a, a local field called Bladen's Field, mm -hmm. oh, it was a good nine, ten feet. Right, okay. And what about um, the surround, because Anthony and I have been <coughs> around that area today and he's been pointing out all of these mounds further down that hill yeah. that he says are grave mounds. Have you looked at any of that sort of stuff in the surrounding area and these walls that seem to go around the side of the, the hill? The walls are very large. Uh -huh. I mean, is that wall still there now? The wall is still there. You've seen it, have you? But Dennis hasn't seen the grave mounds. Right. No. Okay. No. Bef before you sort of did all of that building work, were there any other notable features either near that site or around where the allotments were? No. Because Anthony showed us a map that it's got this squarish structure on it from the 1800s, which isn't there now. It's not far from where the lead slab was found. Uh, have you got that map, Anthony? Do you want to yes. do you want to show just to ask Dennis if he thinks he knows what this might be? This is the allotment gardens. I don't know if the camera is picking that up. Yes, it is, yeah. That is whereabouts the lead slab was, okay? This is in 1962, this map. Mm -hmm. I do believe just five years prior to this incident that Dennis is talking about, okay? Okay, so you've got the lead slab mark there. So There's please. an allotment garden, see? Now, if we move on to the older map, which is what year? 1880, after? this is... The same area. So this is a different map. This is a different map, but this where my finger is is exactly where the lead slab would have been found, right there. That's the area. There so is, it's the, it's it's the not, end of this footpath. Yes. It's not an allotment gardens anymore. Mm -hmm. It's the, something, but that, the wall, that's, the big wall, that's the big wall. The big wall, there's <coughs> the big wall on this map. Of, this is the big wall in 1962 that was around the allotment gardens. At this end, the earth in the earth inside the wall was nine feet higher than the earth of the yes. surface of the field outside it, okay? okay? Up by there it ran out to more or less nothing. Mm -hmm. But it ran up to nine feet. So in this area there was about three feet of soil, two to three feet of soil above that lead sheet, yeah? Okay, the lead sheet there is marked with that uh, rectangle. It there. wasn't as big, a, it, this is out of proportion. Right, okay. So if we move to the older map now. The same area, is still got a wall around it and you can bet you will life at the soil inside there is still higher by nine foot down this area. 
but it's not an allotment garden at that so point. Was this no, this building, this is what Richard is talking about. So the lead slab was around about yes. here? Yeah, the, reds, uh, the lead slab was around about there, but this building, I don't it's know what place. it is. I have no idea. So there's something marked on this? But that's gone, marked. because if you look back there's towards... To it. If you look, yes, there's another footpath from top road going up to it, so it could be some sort See, of... That, that, there's the entrance there. It could be a house. There's the entrance to the allotments. Of the well, they hadn't even built the road in there. Right. If you look on this, this road, map, this now, road, you're like. so so it was just outside the entrance to the allotments there. Uh, this structure. Use the row of pine trees on this map, and the wall is clearly visible. Okay. Right. The wall is they're up against the wall almost. The pine trees. Yep. Yeah. And if you come down, there's the entrance to the allotment gardens, yeah? Mm -hmm. Follow that line and you come to our building. So follow that line and you're more or less where these houses are today. So that building is gone and there are now council houses in the spot where our building was. So really we need to find out what that um, rectangle is there with a the footpath leading up to it. And, um, and you've got this other strange footpath coming up in our direction yeah. as well. They seem to converge yeah. on this place. Yeah, the other two footpaths are coming to where this pyramid-shaped um, stone is. And here's another strange phenomenon. This footpath stops at a wall. It doesn't make any sense. I would say that that footpath was there before this wall was. Okay. And that, like, like I said when we were out earlier on today, I think this path connected up this stuff in this area, right. in the, you know, some point. Dennis has got Google Earth up on the screen, and uh, we're just looking down on the traffic island, and as he said, it's a, it's, it's a teardrop shape. Peterborough we knocked, yeah. where that bush is there, we more or less knocked off the top two foot of this thing. Mm -hmm. But with the spread of it down there like this, from that point out to there, you're talking like a 15 foot elevation from there to there. Okay. You know, it actually goes down. So to my mind, that would uh, like account for the fact that this thing was spreading out as it was going. Okay. Right, this is quite a steep bank, okay? Mm -hmm. But now that when we were there earlier today, there are buildings, houses and stuff going in this direction and the school <coughs> down in this direction, okay? Well, the block of flats was it's the been block sort of filled in, if you see what I mean. Right. It's not as steep as it used to be. There's been stuff put in there that's been disturbed and changed. I think underneath our stone, originally, if we went back 3,000 odd years ago, mm -hmm. there would be some kind of entrance in this area in the bank right. and you've done like an artist's impressions of what I've you think done, that might look like i've done an artist's impression of what i think it could look like could, could you just point out now anthony where the block of flats is that that they moved from this the, the traffic they, island they're gone the block of flats was it the, there was one going there uh -huh. and one across there so they've been knocked down since the, at the bottom of the yeah, bank the one there, yeah. right there was one at the bottom of the bank and one in this direction both of them have been demolished. But originally one of them was meant to be bang on that. This one, that one, yeah. that one mm -hmm. run down there, was originally intended to run straight yes. across the top of that island. Right. There's a bog standard rule in, uh, in the building trade. If you can't get rid of something, make a feature of it. Yeah. And it applies in this case. So, so what's the, what is the name of this place that we're standing now at the moment, uh, Anthony? The village? Yeah. Garn Diffaith. And what does that mean? What does that translate now? It's got various meanings, one of which can mean the place of multitudes of ancient burial mounds. Right. And you think that, that the focal point of that is where we are standing now, or the entrance point is something... The focal point of this entire valley is where we are standing right now. Right. Right, we're actually standing on top of this little roundabout, which is sort of... It's not a roundabout as such, it's more like an island in the middle of an estate. When they built this estate, they had to remove all the earth that had been put in here a long time ago. That was the first thing that had to be done with earth moving machines in order to find solid ground 
to build the buildings on they had to dig it all back out and that's how it got discovered mm. you had the pyramid shaped stone mm -hmm. buried then a lead slab placed on top of it which I think was put there for other people to dig this up again in the future mm -hmm. then about three to four foot of earth placed on top of that and we're talking about quite a large area yeah mm -hmm. I'm talking hundreds of tons of soil was brought into this place in ancient times to bury whatever is under our feet and they also built a containing wall they built around the, wall, the side of the hill they so built the wall first and then filled it up with earth right so can you just tell us where you suspect the entrance might be and uh, why you think it's there I suspect it's directly beneath my feet this lead slab and this stone were definitely buried a long time ago now why on earth anybody would want to do that the only reason I can think of is that there's something underneath I can give you up well I can give you pretty good proof when we go further in that direction to the northwest that there actually is an underground cavern system underneath our feet okay now let me just I'm just gonna pan round and just show the edge of the the, the island so we've got quite a slope leading down to this road here so you think there may have been some kind of large stone over the entrance or something like that uh, Anthony or, like or a doorway a doorway more okay. like a doorway okay I've got some drawings we can look at later on mm -hmm. and you'll understand more All what right. I mean then right. so you think there's maybe an entrance point un and underneath underneath that is where I think the entrance to this big underground chamber lies right. underneath that stone right or that stone could be the capstone of it if you take my meaning with yeah. a doorway underneath it ancient holy place sacred to the dead right okay. in this valley there are hundreds of ancient burial mounds some of which we shall take a look at very soon right walk around the edge of this house and estate and there are still vestiges of that wall left. right Anthony's just explaining uh, where this ancient wall was and he said it was along the line of this these trees here uh, so just so these trees are on one of the maps I think the 1960s map that you've got and you think that the as I say the wall, the wall was adjacent to those right, trees was adjacent to those trees right and we're going to see if we can find some remnants of the wall at some point because uh, obviously we definitely know there's a wall there because it's in an 1800s map is that right exactly all right let's go and have a look at this other side then. right I'm just following Anthony now we're going to we've had a look at the the little island and he's going to take us round uh, to the other side where there's I think possibly remnants of this containing wall beyond this fence mm -hmm. this is where the dome shaped round hill started from right where we're going to walk now is the edge of the round dome shaped hill okay and it once started way up there where those houses or this one on the right is mm -hmm. and we're off in this direction this has been destroyed this part right if you look at the earth you can see probably vestiges of bits of stone sticking out here and there but it's intact from the other side of this house right it's so intact we're walk along, so i've got the first part so someone sort of a t so this is part of the ancient wall here yeah this is part of the ancient wall this is where it starts right so someone's actually attached it onto their breeze block uh, garage right all right okay and there's a there's a newer wall behind it there which is the back wall of these houses gardens this is part of it here Anthony, is it as well this, this is part of it okay perimeter wall, oh, perimeter wall of what I believe was the temple area right so there was another wall that was retaining all the earth then and yet yeah, that was farther up in there right okay. which I shall point out to you on the map right so this is a more modern wall with this fence on top yeah someone's built this on the back of yep. the house now we're coming back, back to the ancient then wall back again the ancient wall again okay all right now just over there that's a burial mound 
okay. you can see it running along there. We can't get a very good view of it from this point, but that is a burial mound. And I shall show you some more. You can see more of this ancient walling. <coughs> and this is the ancient wall here as well? This yeah. is the ancient wall, it's absolutely enormous. You can see part of the mound here. That uh -huh. behind the farm building is an ancient burial mound. Right. Okay. And what about this this building here? Is this, this is this ruined building here. Is this? I would date this at around about 1870s. This one. Okay. Thereabouts. So yeah, we've got a shot of it going right the way around this corner. I don't suppose it's easy to date a wall. This in the background is all ancient walling as well. So this is an, so that's another ancient wall running yeah. along here. You can see the side of the burial mound there. Right. You'd have to be stood on So top. this is a burial mound with a wall going around a the edge. Burial yeah. mound with a wall going around the edge. Right, okay. There'll be more of these to be seen in a short while. Alright, so Okay, I'll follow you then Anthony, lead the way. You know, this has been much abused and partly destroyed over the years. Don't forget, I believe, that this wall that we're looking at now, uh -huh. and in fact all of these walls in the background, oh, yes. Squirrel. <laughs> at about 3,600 years of age. Right. So, that considered, they've stood up to the test of time pretty well considering that there's no mortar in them. Yeah. This is a feature that you need to look at. There's no mortar in any of these constructions. Yes. Now, there's another part of the wall. Right, just there. Which is sort of going down the hill. Going down the hill. And then it, it's going the, across. Another one. It's divided up into sections. Right. This wall is on pretty much every map as far back as you can find, is it? It's on every map as far back as I can find. So this is going right round the perimeter or the edge of this V-shaped hill, yeah? This wall. Yep, this goes right around the edge. If you look at the size of these stones and the amount of stones, it's taken a lot of work to put this together. Mm -hmm. As you can see, the width of this thing is quite phenomenal. Yes. Yeah, it's not just a wall for it's not just a wall to farming keep or something like that. Animals inside. So you lived round here when you were a child, is that right? I spent the first 38 years of my life in this place. Right. And you said that uh, as you grew up, you, you often um, wondered what this old wall was, and you seemed, it seemed odd that all, well, the inner wall had all been filled in with earth. It didn't seem to make sense. It didn't seem to make sense at all. It's an enormous amount of work to what purpose? Uh -huh. Yeah, it looks like... Some sort of doorway or a gateway. But sort of a... Um, Later I'll be able to show you yeah, some we'll better, come, we'll come through it. better so examples. kind of a step down there, and if I turn around, maybe even a little building of some sort with a, maybe a building. An, an entrance through it. The major problem with this site is that everything is spread out so far. Okay. That mountain over there. Uh -huh. well, it's, it's got like a plateau on top of it. Yeah. Yep. Many of the garn clock -dy. And it's got one of the largest underground cave systems in Britain underneath there. Okay. Um, that's easily verifiable. Now, we've come through some sort of gateway in this direction. Because it's a corner of something very big. So we've kind of walked in a semicircle around we've where, walked the, in a very where large, the island is. Yep. We've walked in a very large semicircle 
around our roundabout, shall we say. Yeah. So is there anything like in local histories about this wall, Anthony? Like in the local Nothing at all. all. Nothing at all. No one knows anything about it. Okay. So now this, this place... So this is a very steep gorge down here. Is a sinkhole. Sinkhole for... A place where an enormous patch of earth have collapsed into an underground system. Right. Look yeah, you at can it. see the side of it there. Let me just film it. This is rubbish. Yeah, we'll see. That locals have thrown in here over uh -huh. the years. But this circular hole have sunk into the earth. Uh-huh. So this is a clue that you think there's underground that system there in this area. There is a massive underground system in this area, yeah. Okay. There are lots of these on the other mountain. Right. There's only a couple. This is the biggest one on this side. Uh -huh. But on the other side of the mountain, there are enormous volumes of them. Right. Ranging from little ones to big ones this size. Right. And there are caves further up the valley on this side. Right. So I'm thinking that in that direction, mm -hmm. from this point back to that roundabout, uh -huh is probably an enormous cave right. and I think that this place is a good contender for one of the places where they put their precious items their treasures shall we say mm -hmm. okay. and that's what I think the old thing about burying this lead slab on top of the marker stone right. is all about right. there's a very sad looking pond but when I was a young lad there was a massive wall around this and that's on the map too All right. so I think this is a holy place a sacred well or a sacred spring you can see vestiges of masonry walls this had a wall completely around it and I think this is a special place so this is like a, it's like a bog it looks like a bog now but once upon a time it was a fairly deep pond right surrounded by one of those walls right and i think this is a place where in ancient times they would have venerated whatever deity they thought sacred to water right okay so it could well be there may be things in there right. offerings and such like right okay which is something i'd like to investigate at some point right We've headed back along the path a little bit where we came before and we're going to now go down the hill. It's a pretty steep hill. We're going to follow this wall down then, yeah, aren't we? Okay. Are you filming this wall, Richard? Yep. Just, right. I'll just get a shot of it. Uh, because this wall is going to suddenly turn into something else. Okay. The purpose of which I don't understand. So the wall is coming down the hill. Uh, and then it it's suddenly turns into a series of chambers. Okay. I don't know whether they are graves, whether they are ancient houses. I've got no idea, but you can quite distinctly see that once upon a time, this was some kind of a building. Yeah. And it's not just one building, it's a group of buildings. Uh -huh. If we go over in that direction and we go that way we've got another one in there so it's turned into a little group of buildings in this little spot uh -huh. so we've just got the wall there going up through these trees yeah, this looks like a building as well, possibly here, Anthony. I think. Think? I think this old place is full of buildings. Yeah. We've got to keep going. Yeah, this is definitely a grave mound. And you'll see that the walls run down. Go on. And all of a sudden, they change into a grave. Right. 
Do you think this is a great a grave mound then? Uh, exactly. Come and see for yourself. Somebody else shares my opinion. It's massive. Right. And the trees some, obviously were just put here afterwards, yeah? The trees have just grown of their own accord. Well, in fact, there's another one down by there. Look there. Right, that's, a grave uh, that's mound, another yeah. grave mound, yeah, I'm certain of it. Look, somebody has done this recently. Recently, somebody has been having a dig into this mound. Okay, yeah. Somebody shares my opinion about this is a new one, I haven't noticed this one before. Right, let's have a look what they've done then. Well, you can see by the difference in colour of the stone, right? Somebody has been having a dig. It's a pretty fruitless and pointless exercise because right. they'll never get in there and take a large effort to find whatever is inside this place. Right. I can show you one that's been deliberately destroyed almost by a farmer mm -hmm. so we can get a look at what is in the middle of one. Right. But not now because we can go to that one and have So a that's the one here just in the middle of the screen there. But yeah, someone's clearly... I had a go at trying to get in. They're not going to make it, because if there is something in there, it would require a lot of effort uh -huh. to get it out. Okay. You think that's another mound there? I'm absolutely the certain. Okay. So do you want to tell us about this one? If you follow me, a boat-shaped burial mound. Right. This is the front or the back, but probably the front. Mm -hmm. And as he walked down the structure, <coughs> we'll go this way for a moment. Uh -huh. Yeah, clearly something. <laughs> you can see there was a wall on uh -huh. the side of it. Yeah. You can see it's quite a substantial width to it. Uh -huh. This is right. more or less the end of the boat shaped mound. Right. And at some other point or another, yep. there's been a round one yep. step on the end of it. Okay. This is another smaller mound. Okay. But still quite a substantial one. Yeah. And if we can look down through there, sure. you can see that they tend to keep them in close proximity to their walls uh -huh. as if using the wall as part of the structure like, well like sort of containment uh, for like the mound a, yeah a containment right all right so you reckon that's another burial mound there definitely okay. it's got something to do with that pond right this was once part of a temple that that pond was the central right part of Right. Can you see that standing stone right up against the tree? Uh, between that post? We can go and take a closer look at yeah, it. Yeah, we'll go down there. Between the posts, I can't see it from here. But So, we are at the bottom of that bank where this is a disused railway line and it's been converted into a cycle path, footpath, whatever. I'll just pan round. Look. Okay. So, the, the, the grave mounds that we've just been observing are on the side of this hill there. here. There's some more okay. there. And you reckon there's more grave mounds? Over there They're all grave mounds there then you reckon? Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. So I'll just zoom in on those ones. And you were saying that you thought there's grave mounds all over the side of the other side of the valley as well? Yep. And there are more in this part. Right. And this is the pond When I was a pond. child, yeah. down near that farm in the field over there, beyond those mounds by there, there was a perfectly intact one. Uh -huh. It's been removed since I was a child. Okay. Gone. Now it. So we're going to have a look at this standing stone. Is it a standing stone? See that tree? Which one? Right through these two trees now. Uh -huh. An oak oh, tree. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Can you see, yeah, the, yeah, standing see the standing stone, stone up against now. it? I'll zoom in on the standing stone. Okay, there we go. So can we go and film that? Well, so we'll it's have a standing stone which is we'll have to sneak next on. to. Oh, this is private land, is it? Yeah, unfortunately, that is. And the tree, the tree's just grown up. Uh, the tree where, has where grown on, on top. So, how old is the wall? Okay. And look at this. 
Yeah. Something I forgot to show you, well, I, I want because I wanted to just notice it. Uh -huh. We're on the side of the same hill again, and you reckon this is ancient walling as well here? Yes, Anthony. this is all ancient, and I believe that this is a small temple area, or like a satellite temple to the main one. Right, okay. Well, how do you know that? It's well, not, I'm it just. might not just be a building of some sort, or. Well, this looks look. Like an entrance, or, or. This is definitely an entrance in, okay? This is a stone lined and stone paved pathway. Right. And if we were somewhere else, uh -huh. I could show a perfectly preserved example uh -huh. of one of these. Right. But it's to the north of Cardiff. Okay. On Wenacht, okay? All right. And it's in exactly the same style. This is an ancient well. <coughs> A very very ancient well. Right. The sort of well where one would walk down into it to get the water. Mm -hmm. It's now a bit of a mess unfortunately. And this is the remains of another well. And I think that these wells had a holy significance as well as being just a well. This yeah. is full of rubbish and a tree is growing out of it. And you've got ancient wall in, in this part. All over the place. Yeah. So we've got the new houses here, uh, and you reckon that the wall on this side, Anthony, yeah, is yeah. actually the ancient wall which has been sort of patched up in more that recent times. Patched up. This is original, this bit. So you think this whole area, this modern housing estate was built on top of some old... I think the old village was built on something old. Right. I think the old... The, the village that was built circa 1807 right. was built directly on the ruins of something 3,600 years old. Right. So this on the right hand side here... That's all in that, That's ancient, but at some point someone's filled it with concrete and put a, another wall inside it, then, yeah? These stones here, yeah, this is all you, you think that's original? But, right, we've walked up this path um, from where we've just witnessed the mounds, and you're just going to point out the name of this house, uh, Anthony, which is what? Well, grey stones in English, Carreg stones, Hluid grey. Which means grey stones. Grey stones. Or grey stones. Grey stones. I don't know why I wanted to do that particularly, but there you go. Right, I've just sat and watched Anthony Williams' film about Gondifith with Alan Wilson, and uh, I've come here just to get your opinion, Alan, on the the archaeology that was um, portrayed in the film. What's what are your first thoughts? Well, it uh, my first thought sir, is that it is a, a piece of proof of the antiquity of British history, as exhibited to us by our ancestors. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have to realize that in 1714 something momentous happened. Uh, all British history began to be thrown away and uh, replaced by a weird idea of Celts. Uh, the Irish aren't Celts, the Scots aren't Celts, and the Welsh aren't Celts. If they are, then you throw all their history into the bin. You know, all their histories have to be incorrect. Right? Our histories are based on two major inward invasions. One by Albine from Syria, and that uh, was by the medievals thought to be around 1600 BC. Actually, uh, it's been traced accurately in that Leonard Woolley did excavations of the Third Dynasty of Ur in 1922-34, and he found that the greatest of the people was Dungi, and Dungi sent an expedition to Britain. Mm -hmm. Now that we've proved in spades, in a, 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 the account found in Ur by Leonard Woolley in the 30s, late 20s and 30s exactly matches accounts in the British records. Right. And also artefacts found in votive chambers, uh, little model bulls and sheep and balls and that, are identical with artefacts found in tombs in the UK. Right. So the actual date is probably around 1350 or 1300 mm -hmm. BC, but that's pretty old. Right. But it proves that th there is that link. 
The second migration was that of Brutus, and that's around 500, the Welsh say 504 BC. So you've got two ancient migrations, both inward, Brutus coming after the destruction of Troy mm -hmm. and sailing from the Isle of Lemnos, massive proof. Mm -hmm. That can be proved, proved, and proved. But this was being thrown away deliberately in a campaign of political correctness. Right. Does that, that make sense? Yes. Uh, you're talking, this is all pre-Roman, pre-Saxon. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 How would um, somebody go about actually finding an exact date for such a, such a site on? Well, uh, we've, much, look, we've been at this for 30 odd years. We've published nine books. Mm -hmm. And you, you can interlink the chronologies where one country has a war with another or a dispute with another, and where there has been carbon dating of artifacts in certain parts of the Middle East where, and, and in Britain. And it's a huge matrix that is slowly building up. Mm -hmm. And you can put a fairly good date on, on these things. You, you do it by interlinking different dynasties where there's a war between two ancient countries or where there's a tr trade treaty or where there's a marriage of king's daughter to the other king and all that so on. Mm -hmm. And a matrix can be built up. I can't explain it in a few yeah. minutes, obviously. Right. But it's fairly accurate. So do you think... Uh, any of these sites like the, this lead slab with rock under it, do you think there might be any carbon based material in there that could be dated accurately? Well, you, you can't carbon date metals and you can't no. carbon date rocks as you well know. Yes. But if there is some timber found in a location where it can be said well that's under there so it's got to be that you know. Yeah. Or in a, one of these burial mounds then obviously you've got a very good chance of carbon dating. Even cloth uh, is again uh, a five, right. five or seven. So let's go down the assumption that uh, these people settled from Albine, okay, yes, yes. Uh, in this part of Wales. <laughs> Where does this pyramid shaped stone fit in? I mean, it, it, uh, or, or even uh, uh, this well, slab with, with, with writing on it. This I mean, well, are there I mean, any examples of, of similar things? Well, I haven't seen the writing, and none, none of us have. Yeah. Uh, that there should be writing. Uh, if you can link British history back to Albion, back to Dungi, the third, the greatest of the emperors of the third dynasty of Ur, then obviously you should be looking to link those scripts, right. Right. which is, is possible. Uh, the later expeditions of Brutus, well, if it's in that writing, then it's a piece of cake. Right. All right. And um, if that site was excavated, mm. you, you would presumably you'd excavate the, this traffic island first. No, I, you, you, you know what's there so far. I mean, personally, uh, I would think of one of the burial mounds might be one of the, uh, uh, an untouched one would be a good target. Right. That's what I would think. They're under the oh. burial, the, what are you going to prove? Uh, that is a monumental task compared to a major task. Right. Does that make sense? So you think the, the, the traffic island would be a, a really big job to... Yeah, well, what, I would think that, 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 that... I think you need to start somewhere mm -hmm. where you get a date on it, get a handle on it. Yes. A burial mound might contain a bit of timber or something, and then right. you get it, or even artefacts that can be related back to other artefacts in other parts of the world. We know, it, it is a fact, that people came from Syria. That's why you get the name Surrey. Mm. Right? And they, in the medievals, we're listing all the different people who, the Suedo, Henry of Huntington and others, right? All the different peoples in England, you know, the Mercian Vandals, the Mattles, they're not Angles or Saxons. The British up in the uh, beginning, you know, Lancashire, the later Vikings and the Normans, and they, they were listed in everybody, the Angles, the Saxons, the Welsh. And they also enlisted the Aalder Sassenas, mm -hmm. the old Syrians. Mm -hmm and they were in certain parts of Britain. Now, you mentioned that um, that particular valley uh, that uh, Gundafith is in, mm. you've, you've actually done a little bit of searching in that valley yourself at some well, point. Well, of course, uh, uh, in 86, I think it was, Brian Davis, who's a very fine historian in Panakai, but he lives, uh, he and I were working out star maps, as you know, mm -hmm. and we worked out where uh, the major burial centre might be by looking at star maps where you know that's where Lyra is that's where Capricorn is that's where Hercules is and we were f seeing where they might be in relation to more ancient cultures mm -hmm. does that make sense mm -hmm. 
and we knew where the North Pole stand is, so we direction we were looking in that direction. Right. <laughs> we went a mile or so too far. We couldn't imagine it was in an area where everybody's living. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were looking somewhere in the country. Yeah. Underneath an estate. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> okay. All right then. We missed it by a mile. <laughs> okay. Thanks for your comments, Alan. I'm with Dennis Nash and we're about five miles outside of Pontypool, Pontypool. Yep. and you were working on uh, a building site yes. in the late 1960s Yes. and you unearthed something. So could you just tell us what year it was first, uh, Dennis? Uh, well, I do believe it was like 67, early 68. It dug down about maybe 18 inches, two feet and we had a sheet of lead. Mm -hmm. But none of us had none ever seen anything like this before, right? So we cleaned all the uh, all the earth off. That took us two days, and there was this massive sheet of lead, and it was probably in the region of twenty foot long by maybe twelve, fifteen feet wide. So how did you know it was lead? Well, it was lead. <laughs> right. You can so tell. It's obviously it. metal. You can tell. Oh, metal, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Grey and it's soft, pliable, and right. Uh, all right, and what but, sort of thickness? Well, uh, we're talking about an inch, inch and a half thick. Right, okay. Right, and uh, what struck me at the time was um, all along the one side of this uh, sheet of lead was all this strange, like, hieroglyphic writing. Right. But us being Welsh boys, we just chopped it up and sold it for 40 quid at right. the scrapyard. It was just a little bonus for us. Right. And nobody questioned why it was there or it, you know right okay so we dug this bit of lead up the boss was off on holiday somewhere and we got 40 quid for the lead but then we found a big rock so we started trying to dig this rock out and we went down maybe 10 feet either side of this rock and it was just getting wider and wider mm -hmm. and it sounds silly but it, it, it was like an underground mountain Mm -hmm. Right. So after a week, now they brought the diggers in, started jack hammering. We was on it a week, jack hammering in this thing, and we got down over two foot below the original level of this mountain. And in the end, it put the job back at a fortnight. And the boss went off to see the council about it. And um, what they decided to do then was uh, amend the plans, mm -hmm. right, where the uh, Covered this thing back over, mm -hmm. and it was the toughest rock you ever come across. With. I mean, that JCBs and all them big banging armor right. things couldn't shift it. Right. Took them a week to get like a foot of it off. Right, and it was it was just getting beyond, you know. So it's been suggested that this was a cone <laughs> shape. Is mm -hmm. that what you yeah, did? Yeah, it have yeah. a, a round? Right. Okay. And the these are council houses that you were. Um, constructing, yeah, yeah, and it's a place. Quote, just tell me the name of the place. Uh, Seven View Gandifeth. So it's Seven View, named after the fact that it's the view of the River Seven. Yes, Gandifeth. Gan. Oh, Gan Gandifeth. Okay. Yeah. So, so, just tell us what happened. 
Tell, um, tell us what your role was on the building site first oh, and then tell us what happened. Okay, well, before it was a building site, there was an allotment, it was an open brown field. Mm -hmm. So uh, they passed the plans to build these uh, all these houses and flats up uh, on the site. Mm -hmm. I started there as a general labourer, so we more or less built half the houses. And uh, I went in on the Monday morning and we were supposed to be digging the footings to put a block of flats in, in this particular place. Mm -hmm. So uh, we got down about two foot. And were, you, were you using machinery to dig the cell? No, was it? no, no, it was just shovels at first. Shovels, right. Right, yeah. it ended up with machines. Right. So we... Roundness to it, or it was, was it like, flat-sided, or...? It was like the top of a pyramid, basically. With, with sheer sides on it, but they were just getting wider, and it was getting wider and wider and wider. So flat sides, though? Yes. Yeah, flat sides. Like the top of a pyramid. And, but, uh, but you didn't go down deep enough to find if it had a base or anything? No, it, like was just, it was just going on and on and on. Like so you've got the top of a pyramid, and on, on top of that, a lead slab, an inch and a half thick, yeah. by 20 feet by 12 feet or something. Yes, right. approximately, with, yeah. with writing on it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, would you could you remember what the writing was like? No. Could you compare well, it to anything that you know? Yeah, the Egyptianish. Egyptianish. That, that kind. I mean, I was an uneducated off at the time. Right. You know, I had a job to read and write right. English. Right. Okay. But it was just all funny uh, writing on there, right. like, basically, like right. you know. Okay. I mean, and um, I understand that you're the only person alive that was that was doing that work. Is it, do you know of any? Is there anyone else? Could we remember no, they were, they were boys from Walker, Philly and Pontypridd and uh, right. you know what I mean? So and you were only 18 at the time? I was only 18. So, all right, so... I, and, lived, and, I lived under Jazzery, so... So how did you, when you sold it, how did you, how did you get it to the, 